This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, host of Southern Remedies, Relatively Speaking. Join the conversation every Tuesday at 11 as we dissect issues that are important to you and your family. That's Relatively Speaking, Tuesdays only on MPB Think Radio. Welcome to In Legal Terms from MPB Think Radio, the show all about you and your rights. Our host is Professor Richard Gershon of the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. Before I introduce Professor Gershon and our guest, I just want to remind everybody, hey, it's Tuesday the 1st. Tuesday the 8th is primary day. Remember that there are, you can go to the Y'all Vote dot sos dot ms dot gov the secretary of state's office to if you go to my election day you can get a sample ballot for both the republican party and the democratic party because get this on in my precinct there are no republican candidates running for 11 county offices so if you want to have a say in who is elected for the county, you have to vote in the Democratic primary. But most of our state officials, and there are a couple of contentious primary runoff, you know, elections for the state offices, you have to vote in the Republican one. And so you have to pick You can only vote in one. You have to pick which primary you want to vote in. So, listen, listeners, this is your homework for the week is get your sample ballot and decide which primary you're going to vote in in one week. And if you're not registered, you need to hurry up and get registered so you can vote in October or get registered by October to vote in November. Okay. Hello, Professor Gershon. How are you today? Great, Liz. And I'm really so happy you mentioned, uh, you know, what's going on in uh, the primary elections. And But today we're going to talk about another campaign. We're going to talk about the uh, economic justice campaign of the Mississippi Center for Justice. And it's great to welcome Attorney Charity Bruce, who's the deputy director of that campaign, to the show. And Attorney Bruce, good morning. I, I, would you please tell us a little bit about the work of MCJ and 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 also your background? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, So Mississippi Center for Justice is a nonprofit social justice law firm. We have three offices across the state of Mississippi located in Jackson, Indianola, and the Gulf Coast. And our primary focus is to just help Mississippians with direct services, um, direct legal services, I might add, and legal education that they might not be able to afford nor receive um, on a regular basis. And honestly, that service can stem from heirs property, health law, education, impact litigation, economic justice. That's the campaign I'm on. Um, And it's just it's filled with so much good work. Um, And I'm happy to hear to spread the word about it. Specifically on the economic justice campaign, I have the pleasure of heading our expungement work and small civil claims work with which stem out of justice court but most of my job um, surrounds the expungement work that we do across the state and expungements are so important and we're so glad to have you on the show to talk about expungements because you're giving people a fresh start and and so let's talk about that now so what exactly is an expungement and, and what does it mean to expunge a criminal record so to expunge a criminal record means that you are essentially erasing that record and wiping it away as if a mistake was made and you want a fresh start. And I will say at the onset that a lot of people associate expungements with only the criminal conviction record versus their criminal record in full, which can encompass arrest as well. So even if you are arrested for a charge and you were never convicted of something, it still might show up on a background check. And we always encourage people to check their backgrounds because sometimes people do not know there are things on their backgrounds. Um, We encourage people to check the backgrounds and also just come to us if there's anything standing out so we can go ahead and help them have that clean slate. 
And that's, a, that's such a great point about the fact that you don't have to be convicted. I don't think a lot of people know that. I'm not, I don't do criminal law myself. So that's, you know, that is an important point. Um, and why, why is expungement part of the economic justice campaign? Well, looking at it from a holistic standpoint, um, a lot of the clients that we see, not only are they wanting an expungement to open the door for more like employment opportunities, that's great. But I think people fail to realize sometimes that with those employment opportunities, opportunities might also come health care, health insurance, and might also allow a person to be in a better position for housing. And although um, when people are applying for apartments and renting homes, they shouldn't be discriminated against because of a prior conviction, but a lot of times they are. Um, people don't want convicted felons sometimes living in certain communities. So we try to help people from that standpoint of expungement and clearing their record so that they can have some sense of equity and they will not be discriminated against on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I know a lot of our listeners uh, might be thinking, well, you know, how do I know when I should uh, seek to have an expungement what, you know, and, and you know, to take advantage of uh, what MCJ offers and some other organizations around the state? So. Who should come see you? Honestly, anybody that might think that they have anything on their record. And I will just say, even if it is something that might not be expungible, or if it's something that the state of Mississippi doesn't ri uh, recognize it as an expungible offense, it's not to say that there are not other avenues and other um, legalities they might be able to take. So I always tell people, um, if you think that there is a possibility there's something is on your background check, let's get one done. Let's go ahead and get you a background check done and just see what's there. And then we can work together during the process to really focus and hone in on exactly what can come off that record. And we will do our darnest to make sure it comes off. Again, so it's about, it's about a fresh start really for someone. Um, and so now let's say my case was non-adjudicated. What, what exactly does that mean? Or I, I completed pretrial diversion. Um, does that mean that my record's automatically expunged in those cases? No. And I would like to emphasize that no. A lot of people go through pretrial diversion or non-adjudicated programs, which simply means that if you are arrested, for example, for a misdemeanor possession charge, the judge might say, oh, well, instead of taking your guilty plea, I'm going to table it and I'm going to put you on six months probation. After you finish that probation, I will dim dismiss all charges associated with this offense. Um, a lot of times the judges do enter orders of dismissal. And so clients are under the impression that if a dismissed charge or if the charge was dismissed, it should automatically come off my record. But in the state of Mississippi, you still have to go through the expungement process. So regardless of if you were found not guilty regardless if you were going through these programs and an order of dismissal was entered, you still should contact our office or an attorney to go through the expungement process to make sure it is removed in full. Not only when, um, and not only removed in full from the court itself, but also any other government agency that might have a record of it. This is all good to know. Maybe not for you, maybe for your family, but then also just for society. We love that we are able to bring this information to our listeners. This is In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Now, not everybody has a chance to listen to the whole show live. So if you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show from our website, inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. Our host is Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. The website for Mississippi Center for Justice just has tons of information and information about the, the center. Um, trust me, you'll, it'll be a worthwhile time if you head over to their website, MS Center for uh, F-O-R, justice.org, to learn all about what's going on at their organization. We're talking with 
Charity Jones. No, yes. Bruce, <laughs> I've been talking with Charity Bruce uh, from the Mississippi Center for Justice about expungements today. And, and you know, and you mentioned that the MCJ website, um, Liz, and I think, I think it's important. I would give uh, Charity a chance to say, how is MCJ funded? Because y'all do all this work for people at no charge. So where do you get your funding? Um, grants. And we find it and we work hard to find it so that we can continue the work that we do because it's such great work. Um, it's such life changing work. So we do work hard for grants and funding donations. If you want to donate, please donate as much as you can. Uh, we would gladly take it, honor it and pay it for through the work that we do. Um, so shameless plug right there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, I think people are surprised that, you know, we're going to talk about some of the services you provide in, in terms of expungements and helping them with finding criminal, you know, whether they have something in, you know, of a criminal background or anything like that, that they need to maybe get fixed. Um, and you don't charge for that. No, we don't. And I will say even through the expungement work that we've done in previous years, clients were also just tasked with paying the filing fees associated. But after seeing the need of, you know, people needing these expungements, but also not necessarily being able to afford um, them with the filing fees associated. We've also worked to get funding that will now allow us to pay for people's expungements if they need to and if they meet certain parameters. That's fantastic. And uh, I think, you know, it, it, it serves the state well and appreciate what you're doing. Now, let's let's talk about some specific things that can can and can't be expunged. What what about traffic offenses? Can you expunge those? <laughs> so traffic offenses cannot be expunged. <laughs> um, honestly, because traffic offenses fall off of your record after so many years that the state just feels as if, you know, you d shouldn't even have to go through that process. And again, we're talking about the criminal record, and it might also be the arrest record. Um, so traffic offenses is more so your driving record. So that shouldn't pop up on your background check at all. But if it does, of course, just contact us. We've had people in the past where you would assume that something wouldn't show up on their background check, and it did. But we called the courts, um, we contacted the proper agencies, and we got it taken care of. All right. Well, let's go to the other side of that, then, you know, from traffic uh, uh, offenses to felonies. Can they be expunged? Yes. Felonies in the state of Mississippi can be expunged. Um, and I will say nonviolent felonies or nonviolent offenses can be expunged. Um, recently or in the most recent years, the state of Mississippi expanded that statute from only six recognizable expungeable offenses so honestly, any nonviolent offense that isn't listed in a specific list of you cannot get an expunge, we argue that it is discretionary and up to the judge. And so as long as we ask the judge and they're okay with it, um, then it can come off of your record. Um, I will say felonies that cannot be expunged include like crimes of violence or crimes against a person, um, things such as voyeurism, which is peeping Tom, um, and things such as um, abuse, neglect, and exploitation of a vulnerable adult and embezzlement, a felony embezzlement charge. Like those are a couple of charges that cannot come off. But um, again, we argue that if it's not on that list of nots, then it should at least be considered. So interesting. What about DUIs? I know some people uh, um, you know, deal with DUIs and you know those can uh, certainly show up on your record later. Are those things that are expungeable? So DUI convictions are expungeable, but the caveat is that it has to be your first and only conviction. Mississippi is super strict when it comes to DUIs. So if it's not your first and only conviction, if you have, you know, a second or third subsequent conviction, then none of them can come off. Um, in the state of Mississippi, it's kind of like three strikes you're out because at that point, it'll be a felony DUI, and they will take away your license. Um, so if it's your first and only conviction, and if you did not hold a commercial license or permit at the time, then Mississippi will allow you to ask the courts to remove it. But I will say with DUIs, although a misdemeanor offense, it holds a statutory waiting period that looks similar to a felony offense, which is five years. 
So if you're convicted of a DUI, you have to wait five years from the date of completing all terms and conditions before even asking the court to expunge your record. So it's much easier to wait for a Lyft or an Uber to come pick <laughs> you up than it is to wait those five years. Yes, 100%. 100%. Uh, let's go to the phones and speak with Dennis. Dennis, we're glad you've called in to In Legal Terms today. What's your comment or question? Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Um, I, I wanted to ask about, um, I think I heard her say something about uh, DUI with commercial driver license. And I go ahead, two questions. One with commercial driver license, DUI with the driver license, and also a convicted felon uh, trying to get everything sponsored. Um, I got a DUI, but it was thrown out and uh, do a dismissed. And I do have a commercial driver license. Yes, sir. Uh, so you will yeah, be... I'm so sorry. I was going to say, in that situation, you will be fine. Um, I want to be sure that I make it clear that we were talking about DUI convictions. So a conviction is only if you were found guilty in court. If you were, you know, arrested for a DUI, you went to court and it was dismissed or if it was thrown out and you were found not, found not guilty, then that wouldn't pertain to you. So that DUI that was thrown out, I would say go ahead and try to get that off of your record immediately, especially because you do have a commercial driver's license. You don't want anything coming up. Um, in the future, where a person might assume that just because you were arrested, you were convicted, and that's not the case. But yeah, um, you would be perfectly fine in that scenario. Dennis, what was part two? Okay. Uh, about being convicted felon and trying to get it from what what a, a felony that, that the state of Mississippi don't allow to be expunged. So the felonies that Mississippi does not allow to be expunged are crimes of violence. So, for example, um, armed robbery, murder, manslaughter, any type of offense that you had to hurt a person or um, it's assumed that you hurt a person cannot be expunged. But on the flip side, offenses such as felony shoplifting or grand larceny or uh, receiving stolen property, possession of marijuana, all of those things, plus some more, can be expunged. So, so long as it was a nonviolent offense, um, then at that point, we would just need to look at your paperwork, and we can go from there to determine if you will be eligible or not. Thanks, okay, Dennis. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. All right. We at MPB absolutely are tickled pink <laughs> that the city of Mobile listens to us. But unfortunately, with uh, in legal terms, we do Mississippi law. So Stephen from Mobile, I hope we'll be able to answer your question, but we'll have to see. What's your comment or question, Stephen? Yeah, so I have some uh, felonies from when I was 20. They're about 20 years old. Mississippi um, law. So, identity theft and theft by deception. And I was going to see, I haven't been in trouble since then, so I was going to see if there's any resources available in Alabama to get those expunged. Yes, there are. I always tell people to contact legal services in your local state. And if that is not a viable route, like let's say they aren't doing expungement, if you would want to give me a call and I'll provide my number at the at the um, end of this show, I do have a list okay. of different organizations across all 50 states that do similar work to what we do at MCJ. So if there is ever a time where we can't help a person in state, then I always feel free to reference them out to an organization that's doing like free expungements and things of that nature. So um, after a certain amount of time, though, Alabama is the same where you can get it expunged. I'm not entirely sure because I only focus on Mississippi law. However, sure. I can point you in the right direction of somebody that might be able to answer that. And Stephen, uh, we'll have uh, information for Mississippi Center for Justice and their contact information on this show's podcast. I try to put up links to our guests, so that'll be there for you and everyone to click on. Stephen, thanks so much for calling in today. Sure, thank you.
Yeah, thanks for that call, Stephen. And, and you know, wait, uh, Charity, I have a question here you know, for for on behalf of students who apply to colleges and, and law schools and graduate schools. I think sometimes there's confusion of, between what is a sealed record and an expunged record. And so, what what's what is the difference between those two? So, a sealed record means that the court is sealing the documents for the public to not see. However, an expunged record means that the court is basically ordering the record to be destroyed and that the record will no longer exist. So with sealed records, the record still exists. You just can't see it. You know, the public can't see it or, you know, the public can't access it. But an expunged record means that it it is it's as if the charge or offense never occurred. It's as if you were never convicted of something. Um, that's the presumption. That's how it should be. But, you know, there are certain nuances and caveats to it. But that is the main difference between the two. So you do. OK, so the 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 certain caveat business, <laughs> you, you mentioned the DUI conviction, if it had been five years and it's your first and only one. Well, after 10 years, what if you have another one? Then so somebody does know that that DUI got expunged. Um, essentially. Yes, somebody probably will know that the DUI got expunged. Um, it is as if it never occurred. But yes, there are certain agencies that keep a paper copy of something to let them know that um, there was a history of it. And that's only because, just like you said, if a person's like, oh, well, I'm just going to wait five years every single time to get something expunged, then it will kind of be gaming the system or um, trying to work or rework the system. Um, but yes, there is some type of archival thing where uh, paper copies of things are kept. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Professor Richard Gershon is our expert host. I'm Liz Gill. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. You can get reminders when our podcasts are posted, but you can also find all of the MPB Think Radio recordings on the website mpbonline.org slash radio. All right. So we love the work of Mississippi Center for Justice. And if you don't happen to need their services, maybe you would like to help support them in the work they've done. And this just sounds amazing. September 13th in Ridgeland, Mississippi, they're doing Voices of Mississippi. This is a blues folk gospel and spoken word story storytelling i just absolutely don't think that that covers everything there's not a uh, genre there that folks wouldn't be interested in uh that paints a powerful portrait of the state's contribution to american culture I, I, there's like a flag waving behind me as I'm as I'm saying this. This event will feature live musical performances integrated with film, audio recordings, and archival photographs, all coming to tell a uniquely Mississippi story. One of MPB's favorites, uh, Grammy winner Bobby Rush, is going to be there. There are quite a few other individuals who will be there. So if you want to get a ticket for that. Or if you would like to sponsor that event, they're also looking for uh, partners to work with on sponsoring the event at any price point. <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead and check that mscenterforjustice.org website. Today, we're talking about expungement with our guest, Attorney Charity Bruce. We've got three phone calls. We've got Chris Shirley and David. So let's go ahead and start with Chris in Gulfport. Chris, we're so glad you've called in today. What is your question or comment? Question. Thank you for taking my call. If I got a fifth degree felony in the state of Ohio for back child support, do I need to go back to Ohio to talk about get it expunged, or can they do it from down here? You would have to contact someone in Ohio. Um, my best bet or my you know, best suggestion would be to contact maybe a legal services in Ohio and look specifically within which county or parish you were in in that state and see if they have an organization that is doing them for free first. And then if not, just contact an attorney back in Ohio. But you would have to contact somebody either in Ohio or even if it's somebody here in Mississippi, they would have to also be barred and licensed in Ohio. Got it. 
Okay, I appreciate all of your help. Y'all have a great day. All right, you're welcome, Chris. We appreciate you calling in from Gulfport. Love our coast listeners. And we've got another one. We have Shirley who has called in. Shirley, what's your comment or question? We're talking about expungements today on In Legal Terms. Yes, God bless. Uh, I was calling. Um, I, I got a felon on me when I was 18, and uh, I'm 46 now. Um, they uh, uh, they put an aggravated assault charge on me, and uh, I was trying to see could it ever be expunged. So I would say right now, unfortunately, mm-hmm. aggravated assault is not an offense that the state of Mississippi recognizes as expungable if it were a conviction. Mm-hmm. Now, if there was some type of non-adjudicated program or dismissal or null process entered by the state, then we would, you know, have that conversation. But um, as of right now, aggravated assault is seen as one of those crimes of violence. Um, it's where the aggravated means that you hurt a person or the assumption is that you hurt a person. Um, so, again, if you want to contact me off air, I will always, you know, tell people that I can look over the court documentation just to see if there's anything in those court documents that point to a different route. But um, at the onset, I would say, no, it's something that can't come off right now. Okay. But again, laws are ever changing. So I always tell people to keep hope alive. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shirley, and God bless you, too. Let's go to the Queen City and go to Meridian and speak with David. David, we're glad you've called in, too, in legal terms today. What's your comment or question? Well, uh, something happened to me uh, when I was probably about 19 years old. Oh, I'm glad I'm somebody, but there was no violence involved. And... They sent me to jail. I stayed in jail for two weeks, then they let me out. And after they let me out, uh, over seven years had passed by, and I still never heard from them. And uh, I just wondered, is that expansionable, or charges were never brought, were brought against me that I know of? So <laughs> I don't know. In this case, David, honestly, we will not know until we see those court documents once again, only because it sounds like although you were in jail only for you know a period of two weeks, it doesn't seem as if do you remember going to court or um, being convicted of something in general. So at that point, it's up in the air. And I would say we would just need to review the court documents and really see what is in the court system or in Lauderdale County system, if it happened there, um, to just see. If um, if it would be an expungible offense. Well, I never went to court, and uh, from I was nineteen then. I'm seventy now. Oh, yeah. Okay, David. Yeah. For sure, we have to connect off air. That way, I can speak more um, speak more to you in a private setting and give you some specificities. But of course, if you never went to court or anything like that, and you were simply just arrested. Um, then I would say that there is hope there, but we will have to really determine to see if you will be truly eligible once we get those court documents or anything or a rest, rest okay. record. Thanks, David. Thank and you. we will have all the information to connect folks with the Mississippi Center for Justice. But uh, we want to let you know that they do have a. Let's see. Look, I'm just looking at their website right now although i bet you have a what's your do you know the main phone number off the top of your head charity uh, so it's 601-352-2269 well, i'm so glad you gave that that number i think a lot you know this there's only so much we can do in an hour but you know there's a lot uh, people can do if they actually uh, call you or as you mentioned legal services uh in their state or, or throughout the state of mississippi um, and let's talk about that process, though. Let's talk about the expungement process. And you mentioned it uh, somewhat. You know, they don't, it doesn't cost anybody if they go through you to to, to go through the expungement process. Um, where do you file an expungement? Does it have to be where they were arrested, or how does that work? So it is in the county or city in which you were arrested and or convicted. Um, so I always tell people that sometimes it might not be the best news. Because you do have clients where they were convicted under a specific judge and that judge is still on the, on the bench. Um, and sometimes that expungement might go back to that judge. But as always, I tell people so long as we meet the statutory standards and we are showing the court 
that those standards are met, um, then it shouldn't be a daunting process. But yes, a person will need to file the documents for expungement in either the county or city in which the offense occurred. So if you were arrested for a felony offense in Hines County, you would need to file your documentation at the Hines County Circuit Court. And you mentioned the judge, and, and so the judge, it sounds like the judge has a lot of discretion. Can the judge say no? A judge can say no. Um, it is ultimately discretionary. And I would just make that um, known that it's discretionary for convictions. If you had an offense that was dismissed or there was no disposition or you were found not guilty, then at that point the discretion is taken away because there's no use in that being on your record when the court has already ter determined that they didn't want to, you know, convict you of it. So with convictions, yes, there is um, some level of discretion, like discretionism and discretionary. But again, so long as we talk to the judge as well as the prosecutor and the court as a whole, most times they're okay with signing off on that expungement documentation. Thank you for being part of In Legal Terms. If you have missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show on the MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. It's also available on the MPB Public Media app, as are most of our local shows. Our host is Professor Richard Gershon from the University of Mississippi School of Law. I'm Liz Gill. Tuesdays, uh, following our over-the-air broadcast at 11 a.m. Central, you can hear Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking, with Dr. Susan Buttress on MPB Think Radio. So, uh, Professor Gerson, I'm just thinking about you. If uh, you've got all the uh, family members in your life and you want to get them Hanukkah presents, all you have to do is go to the Mississippi Center for Justice. They have a store, and this is their 20th anniversary. It is uh, Justice Takes All of Us 20, 2003 uh, to 2023. They have tote bags, stickers, enamel mugs, mouse pads, water bottles, <laughs> T-shirts. Uh, oh, look at that Champions of Justice T-shirt. I <laughs> love that with the, with the sunrise over the field. Oh, there's so much shopping anyone could do. And you can also get a gift card. If you, mm -hmm. if you just can't decide which of the <laughs> products you want to purchase uh, at the, for the Mississippi Center for Justice, that is another way that you can support them. And I'm mentioning that because our guest is attorney Charity Bruce from the Mississippi Center for Justice, a nonprofit organization, and she's talking about expungements today. Yeah, and you know, when you mentioned Champions of Justice, I can't help but think about my great late colleague, George Cochran, who always bought a table at the Champions for Justice Center. And uh, and really, he is, he is sorely missed by so many people in this state. Um, so I want to think about George. But uh, Let's let's talk about uh, continue our discussion about expungement and and you mentioned you know about where the case has to be filed. Can that be appealed if a judge turns down? Uh, you know, if they say you can't, I'm not going to expunge this this criminal conviction. I will say that I haven't seen an appeal, or I have seen people kind of fight back about it. But at that point, again, the statute leaves it, you know, discretionary. Um, so long as the judge gives a a reason or more so a defining reason for not turn for not allowing the expungement, um, I've seen them kind of stand. For example, I had a man that was upset that he didn't get an expungement for a possession charge, but the judge just wasn't um, under the impression that he was fully, um, you know, sober from what he might have been indulging in. Um, initially. So I will say that, knock on wood, we have not had that occur through MCJ, um, but I've seen people try to fight for it. But most times if a judge gives, you know, a substantive reason for it, then usually it will stand. That's so interesting. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Um, and that's why you need probably a representative to help you with that expungement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so what about do I do I have to do when do I have do I ever have to report that I've had my record expunged to anybody? So um, 
That is, that's such a good question. Um, because at the end of the day, it is as if it never occurred. Um, and I tell people that you do not have to disclose that information. However, if a person comes to you and asks you very plainly and specifically about a charge that you know you were convicted of or that was once on your record, I tell people that it's, it's just probably best to be honest about it um, because they might already know is why they are asking about it. However, no, like I, I would say on the onset, you do not have to disclose that information on your own volition. However, if it is asked of you in a very specific situation, then I would just advise a person to be as honest as they can be. Yeah, and I know for our students, we always think about because some bar organizations say you got to report it even if it's been expunged. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, in those situations, so it's, I think, it, it, I, I think people just have to read what's required of them for that particular job or you know um i agree it certainly helps go ahead i'm sorry i was i was agreeing i agree 100 percent. and if a job doesn't make it um necessary to tell then don't but if there are specific parameters or if a job is asking very specifically um about those offenses then i advise clients to just be truthful yeah and that's, I think that's, that's the bottom line, especially I know for our students. Um, now, um, by the way, we had, we did have an in-house question about um, driving school and, you know, uh, and traffic offenses. And I know that's not expungement, but how, how does that all work? From what I've seen in court is most times if you have a traffic ticket and a judge is under the impression that, oh, you made a mistake, it's okay, you don't have a record or a driving record, I'm going to give you an opportunity just to go to this driving class. And once you finish the class, then I will either remand it to the file and not you know, convict you of anything so that way it won't show up on your driving record. Um, but I will say that in certain jurisdictions, in certain courts, in certain judges, that after that first traffic offense, then that driving school option is no more. So just be careful. Um, just be alert when driving because sometimes people assume, oh, I'm going to get the option of driving class, but that's not always the case. Yeah, there was, uh, I know in Florida, you would get points against your license that would hurt you on insurance. But if, if you had the driving school option, then it would you, it would cut down on the number of points, and so you wouldn't your insurance wouldn't be increased. And one of the driving school options was the Laughing Academy driving school, which I always thought would be interesting. But um, so you know, what about we we had a call earlier about out of state. So what about um, out of state expungements? And how, you know, again, how can people deal with those if they're if they're in Mississippi, but their uh, their record is in another state? I always advise people, again, to just call the legal services of the state um, and just ask the question um, simply and plain if they do expungement work. And if not, they probably can point them in the direction of an organization they can. I also keep a list at MCJ of organizations across the 50 states that do similar things to what we do, especially with expungement. So that way I can always reference out. But honestly, it would just take calling and asking. A lot of the clients that we have, although we are a Mississippi-based organization, we help people with Mississippi offenses. So it's not to say that if you live out of state, we can't help you. It would just need to be a Mississippi offense. And so we have a lot of people that call us from New York or California or D.C., you know, so many different areas that have had a charge in Mississippi years ago. And we do it all virtually. We send all of the documents to them. We get the documents to the courthouse, um, and we work it from that angle. But I just advise them to call those organizations across the state or just to see if they um, have that capability. And you do work with individuals, but also uh, MCJ does clinics, uh, you know, periodically. Can you tell us about those? Yes. So we do clinics. We do a lot of clinics. We travel across the state. If there is a community partner or organization that wants to work with us, then all we simply ask is for a space to come to set up house. We bring printers, scanners, paper, ink, whatever might be needed. And we actually draft petitions and orders for expungement on the scene that day 
for individuals that are eligible for expungement. All we ask is that they bring the proper court documentation, and from there we will sit and we will draft for them in front of them, talk to them, answer any questions. And I will say um, more in the recent months, we've started to partner with also like the courthouses, the DA's office, um, all of the sheriff's department, police department. So that way, if we do have a clinic, a lot of times people can walk away with their record actually expunged the same day because we ask some judges to just sit on the bench that day and enter orders of expungement after we complete drafting them. I mean, it's really, it's, it's fantastic. And it does show that uh, the system itself wants to work with you in the appropriate cases to to allow expungements, to allow people to, you know, the fresh start. As you mentioned, I mean, it, uh, you know, the economic justice portion of this really comes in and that, that, that criminal record um, could affect somebody when they're applying for a job, could affect somebody when they're, you know, trying to make, trying to, to move on in their lives, you know, get an apartment, buy a house, those kinds of things. Um, talk a little bit more about economic justice and, and what some of the other things that uh, that um, that campaign does uh, with MCJ. So not only do we do expungement work, but I also have the pleasure of working with a great team that focuses on foreclosure prevention work as well as financial literacy work, um, as well as broadband, broadband equity. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys have been paying attention to um, some of the monies coming into the state as far as uh, broadband and affordable connectivity, but we are working to help people actually complete ACP applications um, in an effort to enter into that program for affordable connectivity. Um, as far as foreclosure prevention, we have a great team that helps people connect with some of the organizations such as like Home Saver Plus that are still paying for people's back mortgage payments. And I think or I believe it's up to six months um, after that as well. Um, so we, you know, help people fill out applications for that. We talk to the proper uh, people. We even help prevent foreclosures by talking to maybe the mortgage lenders or um, the law firm that's here in state handling the case um, for, you know, that lender that's not in the state and things of that nature in an effort to maybe stop the sale and then maybe we work or to come up with some type of strategy to allow this person to stay in their home before being evicted. Um, we also focus on financial literacy. I know there have been plenty of times where we help people talk through like student loans, maybe like look through a contract to make sure that they're not being taken care of. I mean, not taken advantage of, sorry. Um, because we know that predatory lending is such, such a thing in Mississippi that a lot of people don't read all terms and conditions sometimes don't before. read the terms and conditions when <laughs> you sign something hard yeah. sometimes you know um that's a joke because we don't read them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so you know there have been times where of course if a person has a question about something or if they feel like they're being taken advantage of then we will sit down and um and talk through things and help them and maybe even file a case and go from there and just see what we can do for them to return them to to whole Thank you very much. Attorney Charity Bruce, Deputy Director for Mississippi Center for Justice, Economic Justice Campaign. We've been talking about expungements. Thank you for coming in and being on our show today. Thank you for having me. Oh, we are so glad that we've got uh, Abram Nanny, who has been our pot, who's our podcast producer and our board engineer. And we love Luke wherever he went. Uh, our engineer, our uh, intern who has been answering our phones. So this wraps up for this in legal terms uh, for Professor Richard Gerson, who hosts from the University of Mississippi School of Law. August is back to school month. And although you teach summer school, so it's school year round for you. I'm Liz Gill. Join us next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central for In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.